That is very random. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm recording now, so let me uh, let me do this. Um, what I want to do is I want to show you a problem that's going to arise in a lot of your CSS designs. When you have the uh, two si uh, two major content areas floated left and right, you get this giant gap under one of them. It just depends on whichever one's longer on your page. And since you have uh, you might have 10 pages, sometimes the sidebar is going to be longer, sometimes your content is going to be longer. You need a, a design that can actually um, accommodate this. So let me show you that the real problem here is if I put a background on container of this horrible red color, and then I do the same thing on sidebar, and I've got this equally horrendous teal color. But they're, just, they're just bright and garish. So anyway, I've got this giant gap. Ugh. First of all, I also have this gap under here. What usually is causing that, strangely enough, is your paragraph tags. Paragraphs have a margin built in around them. And strangely enough, the paragraphs that are inside the content, their margins are actually allowed to push outside of the content onto boxes that are outside of the content box. So if I take the paragraph tags and I set all of their margins to zero, it gets rid of all that gap. Now that does mean that my paragraphs don't have any margins around them anymore, but if you really want to still be able to control that, it's actually better to do it with line height anyway. Set that to 1M or 1. If I set it to 2Ms, I effectively get double spacing on my paragraphs. Yeah, that's a weird one that, that CSS came up with. So now that my boxes actually line up, there's no weird gaps in between them except the one here, I still want to make it so that this gap isn't there. I want to make it look like the sidebar always goes to the bottom to, to touch the top of the footer. You can't do it with CSS. I, there's nothing that tells these bars to stretch to 100% the, the height of the box that they're in. Even though there actually are CSS commands that are supposed to work that way, none of them work. None of them have ever worked. So, what you're actually going to have to use is Photoshop. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a 960 pixel wide image that spans the entire from left to right and up to 760 pixels it's going to be this red, the last 200 pixels it's going to be this blue, and I'm going to set it as the background of my container. And then it'll be behind everything. And I can even show you that in Firefox. So file new, it's got to be 960 wide, it literally only has to be one pixel tall. One pixel, that's really cool. Oh my god, I can't even see it now. So unfortunately, I need to be in, I need to zoom in and see where my 760 is. Okay, there's 760. So all of this needs to be, I'm just going to use whatever color is here. Use my paint bucket and put a color whoop, right in there. And then I'll unselect and I'll grab a new color and I'll put it in there. And I don't like this. I don't want to have a weird little color going on, so we grab the pencil tool. If you hold down Alt, you get the eyedropper temporarily. There we go. Now I'm going to have a nice, clean division. I don't know if you could tell on the screen, but it was there was sort of a fade there. It was, it was mixing the colors. So file, save for web. I'm going to make this a GIF at two colors. It's a total of 82 bytes for my background. Awesome. Desktop, that was in this template folder. I'll call it container-bg. Under uh, dash BG. I like that's how I like to name all of my background files, what box they belong in. All right, well I don't need these background colors anymore because I'm using different ones. So now I'm back to, to white boxes. But in my container, background, grab this guy, boom. Now that does mean that it is behind absolutely everything, including the header. But the header and the footer go all the way across. If I I can take those and make them white. 
do the same with the footer or any other color that you like or go create another background image for them. And now it doesn't matter which one of these is bigger, the background will always stretch out. Yeah. And let me show you real quickly in Firefox because this has the nice little um, 3D view. Inspect, inspect element, 3D. It's kind of hard to tell, but this, let me see, that's header. One of these under one of these bottom elements is the container. I believe it's actually the second one. It's gotta be it's gotta be this one. This is these boxes right here are all the paragraphs. This is sidebar. This has to be container. Yeah, that's container. Am I doing that right? Yeah, this one is the body and I think this one's the HTML. This one's the container. It's underneath of everything. What's that? I change. I got rid of those completely. Okay, yeah, there's no reason to have that extra code to to give this a background color and this a background color. You're controlling it through the through the other one, through the container. No, and the only other thing that you might want to have happen on these is if you're going to do this, your content one. I'm actually going. To, I want to have a little bit of a gap here um, so there any text doesn't butt right up against the edges um, I can actually make that 740 pixels wide and then there will be a nice gap here it's a little hard to see isn't it I chose a really dark color um, and if I wanted the sidebar I want this to come off the edge what I can do is add some padding to the left of that say 20 pixels and then how is that still working? Okay. Let me change this color real quick. Something a little bit lighter. There we go. Now you can actually see what's going on. When I added 20 pixels of pat padding to the left of this sidebar, it actually adds that to the 200 pixel width that was already there. So now that box is 220 pixels wide. So that means if I still want it to come up against, sort of get pushed back over, I need to subtract the padding that I just added. There you go. Now it's it's still 200 pixels wide because it's 180 plus 20, and that 20 is actually sitting right there. Uh, if I want to add that same to the right so it doesn't go up against the right edge, I need to do it again. And then, there we go. Now you can tell where everything sort of sits. Does that help cheat? Yes? Probably, yeah. If you're, if you're going to have pages with content boxes and then other pages with content and sidebar, those should probably be two separate templates anyway. Yeah. Um, what you can do in that case is give each body uh, a class, one for one column and one for two column, and then as long as all of your selectors start with either one column space the rest of the selector or two column space the rest of the selector, they'll grab onto either of those pages. Does that make sense? Or you could easily just create two separate CSS files. One for each. Usually in that case, I would say if, if you have one page that you want to style different than the rest of it, give its body an ID that's unique across the entire website. Uh, I think we did that in the, in the template one at, at one point where we gave every single page a different ID and then we could write a selector that only affected some things on the home page and only affected things di slightly different on the about page. That would be acceptable. Like I originally 